The following is a presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars baseball. And he drills that. Deep to right center, center fielder, late break. It's into the pines. A two-run home run. Live coverage of BYU baseball is brought to you by doTERRA. doTERRA, proud sponsor of the BYU baseball team. Now, for all the action, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good afternoon, Cougar baseball fans. Welcome inside Larry H. Miller Field at Miller Park on the BYU campus in Provo, Utah. As today, a couple of hours earlier than originally scheduled, the BYU Cougars look to stop a slide with a return to the home diamond digs. It's the 4-10 and Cougs hosting the 7-8 and Utes of Utah. First of three scheduled meetings between these in-state rivals. The Utes have won nine of the last 12, including the last two overall and the last two played in Provo. I'm your play-by-play broadcaster, Greg Grubel. Great to be with you again. And with our first pitch just moments away, time to hear from BYU head coach, Trent Pratt in our leadoff interview presented by doTERRA. doTERRA, pursue what's pure today. Coach Pratt hoping his guys can begin to clean things up on defense during BYU's four-game losing streak. The Cougs have ten errors, while BYU opponents have only seven on the season. Yeah, we've got to play clean. Um, to win games, you've you got to play clean and you know throw strikes, play catch, and get hits when you need them. That's kind of what, what the game comes down to, and and that's something we worked hard on it you know, yesterday, and we have the ability to do it. We seem to go out and do it in the game. And when you have a day like yesterday, what do you see that encourages you? Um, the guys are excited to play. Um, I feel like, you know, it's been a rough stretch, but guys are excited and, and ready to get this rolling. And we still believe we, we can be a good team. And that's the biggest thing. You don't see guys hanging their head, you know, like feeling sorry for themselves. The guys are out there working hard and trying to get better. So that's always encouraging. Okay. Do we expect a, a left-hander versus left-hander matchup today on the mound? Yeah, we've got Mason Olsen going for us. I believe they have TJ Clarkson, so... We'll run Mason out there and see how far he can go for us and hopefully we can get him a lead and, and then keep adding on to that lead and get, get a couple stops out of them. What do you think of Mason's year so far? He's been great. Um, he, he, he's a competitor. He throws three pitches for strikes, and it's a guy that's gone out there and done a really good job for us. Clarkson's a do-it-all guy for Utah. Yeah, he is. Um, he hasn't pitched a lot, but he's been pitching more this year, and he's been their best bat, and so we have it working out for us. Um, they're a good team, and we know that, and man, we're ready to come out and, and get a win today. How do you view the Utah games? Um, they're important. Um, these kids know each other and play against each other, and so it's a rivalry, and it's not just another game. We want to play against another game, but it means something. And we usually get good crowds, and it's, it's a good atmosphere to play in, so man, our kids are excited to go out there today. Good to be back home, and as we speak, the weather's great. We moved the game up a couple of hours, though, to avoid what we think might be a, a wet night. Yeah, we, we want to play. Um, so when we have the ability to move it and, and get out some weather, then that's kind of what we want to do. So... Um, Hopefully, you know, the weather holds off and we can start at three and get nine innings in. Okay. Coach, good luck on this one. We'll talk to you post game. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. That is BYU head coach Trent Pratt. Time now for today's starting lineups, courtesy of Big O Tires. Stop by your locally owned and operated Big O Tires, the team you trust. For the visiting Utah Utes on the hill, number 13, TJ Clarkson, 1 0 with a 1.35 ERA. Batting order. Shows Kai Roberts leading off the left-handed hitting center fielder. Kai Roberts, number 27. Hitting second, the right fielder, number 21, Dakota Duffalo. Hitting third, also lefty, the DH and the pitcher today, TJ Clarkson. Hitting cleanup, the first baseman, number 7, Jaden Kiernan in the five hole. The third baseman, number 18, Cameron Gurney. Hitting sixth, number 24, Davis Kopp, today's catcher. Hitting seventh, the left fielder, number 14, Elijah Hamill. Hitting eighth for the Utes, second baseman, number 34, Jake Gish. Getting his first start at second base. The usual second baseman for the Utes, Landon Fry, is uh, dealing with an injury right now and uh, missed the last game. We'll may miss today as well. We'll see if he's available off the bench. And uh, at the nine hole, the left-handed hitting, shortstop number two, Matt Flaherty. Those are the Utah Utes in gray today. BYU in royal and white. Cougs will start. Mason Olsen on the hill. 0-1 with a 3.38 ERA. He, like Clarkson, is a southpaw. Batting order for the Cougs. Leading off the shortstop, number five, Ozzie Pratt. Left-handed hitting, Ozzie Pratt. Moving up a spot in the batting order. In fact, the two, three, four, and five, and six batters are all moving up a spot in the order today. Bring a little more punch to the closer of the top of the lineup. You've got hitting second, number 25, Austin Deming, the third baseman. Hitting third, left-handed hitting, number 22, Cole Gamble, the center fielder. Hitting cleanup, right fielder, number 27, Ryan Sapiti. Hitting fifth, the DH, number 10, Safaya Mawai, also hitting left-handed. In the sixth hole, the first baseman, number 35, Jacob Wilk. Hitting seventh, left fielder, Luke Anderson, number 11. 
Hitting his first start in 11 days is Anderson today. Hitting eighth, number 32, Easton Jones, BYU's second baseman. And hitting ninth, the catcher once again, getting his 11th start behind the plate, number 39, Brian Fall. Ready to go on a day with 57-degree temperatures. It feels like around 53. This is a pretty good wind, 17 miles per hour coming out of the south southeast, so not a great wind for left-handed power hitters right now. It's blowing across the outfield from right to left and kind of blowing in from right with that south-southeasterly direction. But here we go, hopefully ahead of the rain with a 3.05 first pitch. It is BYU and Utah. Utah, red caps, gray pants and jerseys, and a Utah block arch across the chest. First pitch of the day is delivered ball one from Mason Olsen. BYU Royal Caps, Royal Jerseys, and White Pants. The left-hander winds and deals. And swinging and missing is Roberts for an even count at one and one. Kai Roberts just one at bat in his last four games. He's been a little nicked up, but gets the start today. That'll be inside. Around the knees and off the plate by a good six inches for ball two. Two and one. Olsen kicks and fires. And that'll be sharply fouled on the ground down the left field line. Count even at two and two. That was an 89 mile per hour fastball from Mason Olsen. His fastball in the 88 to 91 mile per hour range. A slider and a change in the arsenal. And that'll be a breaking ball just inside for ball three. Three and two the count. Three balls and two strikes to the leadoff hitter Kai Roberts. Mason deals and hit him on the thigh. So a full count HBP and Kai Roberts is aboard to begin the game. So Mason losing that inside. Now the right-handed hitting Dakota Duffalo will step in. Mason Olsen looks down to his pitchcom armband. And the pitch comm is a system being used throughout most of college baseball now. An LED display on the armband for pitchers and everyone in the field. As squaring to bunt and dropping it down is Duffalo. Handling it is Olsen. Can only go to first. And a nice dig by Jacob Wilk to get the out at first. That was a low throw. Skipped off the turf to Jake. And Wilk records the first out. The sacrifice bunt for Dakota Duffalo. So reaching second on the play is Roberts. And now it's a runner in scoring position and one gone for the left-handed hitting T.J. Clarkson. Also today's pitcher for the Utes will D.H. out of the three spot. And that catches the outside, top end of the zone. For strike one, as judged by home plate umpire Stu Bertrand. Bertrand behind the plate. Mike Jarbo at first and Anthony Prater at third. A check swing squibber to third baseman Deming. He'll handle fire to Wilk for the second out. Staying where he is is Kai Roberts, so the runner does not advance, and two are now gone here in the top of the first. So the 5-3 ground out retires T.J. Clarkson. It'll bring to bat the cleanup hitter, number seven, Jaden Kiernan, the first baseman. The runner on second is Roberts. Kiernan hitting 400 against left-handed pitching. And the left-hander Mason Olsen induces a liner to Jacob Wilk. And that'll do it. So the lead runner reaches, but he is stranded. As the next three go out, 1-3, 5-3, and unassisted to the first baseman on the line drive to the bag. That'll do it for the top of the first. We go bottom one for the Utes. No runs, no hits. There were no errors. One was left on. We go to the bottom of the first, 0-0. Cougs and Utes on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. BYU Athletics would like to recognize Intermountain Healthcare for being today's game sponsor and thank them for being an important part of our team. Intermountain Healthcare, the official medical provider of BYU Athletics. We're bottom one here at Miller Park. And leading off of the Cougs, the shortstop, Ozzie Pratt, jersey number five. Now back to the Cougars leadoff, shortstop number five, Ozzie Pratt. Ozzy's first nine games this year, he was hitting 361. In his last five games, hitting 182, roughly half of that. See if he can get it going here today. Getting his seventh consecutive start at shortstop as Brock Watkins continues to be on the mend. 
Pratt, the usual second baseman, playing short since Watkins got injured. And T.J. Clarkson, the left-hander, kicks and deals and pipes in strike one taken by Ozzie Pratt. Clarkson, 6'2", 220, the junior from Gilbert, Arizona. And hitting the pitcher DH spot today at three-hole. Left-hander versus left-hander as Ozzie takes high and away for ball one. So one ball and one strike to Pratt. Just one hit in the weekend set versus Creighton in Chile and rainy Lawrence, Kansas last weekend. The 1-1 from Clarkson. That's fouled out of play down the left field line. Clarkson, three-pitch mix primarily. Fastball slider change. Fastball high 80s is likely his upper limit. Slider in the low to mid-70s and a change in the high 70s to around 80. And that's a breaking ball that nearly clipped Ozzy Pratt, but it stays in for ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Off-speed offering from Clarkson. A tidy ERA of 1.35 in six and two-thirds innings pitched. The wind and deal, and that's sharply hit to left center. It'll gap for a double. Ozzy Pratt digging and will hold with his first double in a while. In his first six games, he had seven doubles, and he had none since until just now. So it's a leadoff double for Ozzie Pratt, and the Cougs have a runner in scoring position early against the Utes. And just the guy you want to see coming to bat, Austin Deming. Deming, BYU's hits and RBI and home run and slugging and total bases leader, and he comes in on an eight-game hit streak. And he hits with a runner in scoring position. And Austin sitting 385 with runners in scoring position. Near his season average of 396. High and outside for ball one to Deming. Fastball missing on the top side from Clarkson. Again, Ozzy Pratt was uh, lacing everything for doubles in the first couple series. And then he went uh, double less for a couple weeks until moments ago. His eighth double of the year to lead BYU as Deming takes high for ball two. Back to Ozzie Pratt and Deming. The one-two hitters today were tied for the doubles lead until Pratt's two-bagger a moment ago. So Ozzie now with his eighth double leads BYU in that category. Two balls, no strikes to Deming. The right-handed hitter facing the southpaw Clarkson who kicks and deals. And that is hammered. But Fallon off the bus. That was a UTA job on University Parkway. He hammered that off the side of a bus waiting at the red light. That's a loud strike, especially loud for those in the bus. Two balls and a strike to Deming. And that's low for ball. Oh, no, the late call strike. And the passengers in that bus that now rolls away had to be slightly alarmed when an Austin Deming foul ball cracked off their vehicle. All right, two balls, two strikes to Deming. No one out, runner on second, bottom one. And that's in the dirt. Catcher will chase. Ozzie will advance to third. The count will go full to three and two. So the Cougs have something going here in the bottom of the first inning. And catcher Davis Kopp will have a conversation with T.J. Clarkson as Kopp has recovered that ball that's skipped away and Cop and Clarkson share a smile as Deming awaits a full count delivery three balls two strikes no one out runner on third now BYU with runners on third and less than two outs converting RBIs at a 654 clip right now and that is high to left field. Not terribly deep. Left fielder back five yards shy of the track. Will make the catch. Ozzie will tag, and that will be a sack by RBI. The Cougs will take a 1-0 lead here in the bottom of the first. As Austin Deming adds to his RBI lead with his 17th of the season. And BYU takes a 1-0 lead. Ozzie Pratt galloping home from third. And on the fly out to left, the Cougs have their first run. 
It'll bring Cole Gamble to the plate. Left-handed hitting Gamble facing the Southpaw Clarkson with one out here in the bottom of the first inning. Gonna take a ball one by Gamble. Gamble had a three for six weekend in the two game set with Creighton. The 1 0 to Cole. Low and away for ball two. Two balls, no strikes to the Cougar center fielder. BYU 1, Utah no score. Bottom one here at Miller Park. A steady wind from the south southeast. Out in front of his Cole waves at strike one. A swing and a miss. Speed low 80s there from Clarkson. Two balls and a strike. You can hear the wind whipping through our crowd microphone here at Miller Park. And that's another swing and a miss for Cole. So from 2 and 0 to 2 and 2. And again, off speed from Clarkson. Clarkson's long inning or long outing this year is 2.2 innings. And this will be a staff day for Utah. We shouldn't see him for terribly long of a stint as that's high and outside for ball three three and two with one gone to Cole Gamble base is clear Ozzie Pratt let things off with a double advanced on a wild pitch and scored on the sack fly from Austin Deming and Cole drives that to center field center fielder Kai Roberts ranging to his right makes the catch on the run and out number two a pair of flyouts for BYU to left and to center Ryan Sapiti hitting clean up the right fielder will step in and Ryan's swinging it well. BYU's batting average leader. His last three games, five for ten with four runs and three RBI. And Ryan comes in two today, having reached safely in five consecutive games. Two gone, no one on. Clarkson facing Sapiti. Sapiti will chop that foul down the third baseline. So the 0-1 now to Sapiti. Six foot, 205 pound senior from Las Vegas. Seven multi hit games this season. I'll foul that away the other way on the first baseline. So 0 and 2 to Sapiti. This game starting with three of the four scheduled umpires. One may still be in transit. We'll see how long they go with just three. The weekend series in uh, Lawrence, Kansas was played with. Just three umpires. Sapiti hitting righty versus the lefty, Clarkson. Winds and delivers high and away. Chase pitch goes to one and two. BYU leads the all-time series 248 wins to 126 losses, one tie. The last 12 games have gone 9-3 in Utah's favor, however. One, two, two, Sapiti. Foul to the screen. Count stays one and two. Two gone, no one on. BYU one run on one hit. Utah went hitless in the top of the first. Did get a lead runner aboard on a, on a hit by pitch. But that runner was stranded at second. As the Cougars got out of the inning, no damage done. Utah tends to play lower scoring games of late. That's high to even the count at two and two. Fastball at 88, top of the zone. And just missing the top of the zone. Two balls, two strikes. Just his second start of the season for Clarkson. He began last Tuesday's game. That's opposite field, sharp to deep right, but not terribly deep as ranging back toward the track and making the catch is Dakota Duffalo. And so for BYU, it's a flyout to left, a flyout to center, and a flyout to right for outs one, two, and three of the bottom of the first. We go top two, BYU one, and Utah no score. For the Cougs, one run on one hits. There were no errors. There were no one left on. 1-0 1-0 BYU. Top two next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Utah third baseman Cameron Gurney grounds out 4-3 to begin the second inning, bringing to bat Davis Kopp, the catcher, and he'll take strike one from Mason Olsen. Fastball at 88 from Mason. BYU won. Utah no score. We're top two here at Miller Park. And the first batter in the second has been retired in Gurney. And Kopp is quickly behind 0-2 to Olsen. Davis Kopp is uh, struggling. Last six games, 2 for 18 at the plate. 
He's the strikeouts leader for Utah. He takes low. 0-2 to make it a 1-2 count from Olsen. A pair of left-handers starting today. The 1-2. That's out. Oh, that's a punch out. Bit of a delayed call, and that's the 17th strikeout of the season for Davis Kopp. Continues to lead Utah in that category, so a backwards K. I've got to get used to the uh, the rhythm of Stu Bertrand. He'll wait a second before he makes that call. But it is out number two. And so five consecutive Utah batters retired. Elijah Hamill, the left fielder, steps in. Right-handed hitting Hamill. And he drives that to center field, ranging over to his right, making the catch on the run is Cole Gamble. Good jump from Cole. So a 1-2-3 inning for BYU on defense. We go bottom two for the Utes. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on. one nothing Cougs. Bottom two next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. BYU Baseball brought to you by Bam Bam's Barbecue, bringing you authentic Central Texas barbecue. Try their tender brisket or mouth-watering pulled pork. Bam Bam's, located just north of BYU's campus. Bam Bam's Barbecue, proud sponsor of BYU Athletics. Safayat Mawai, BYU DH, steps in, leading off the bottom of the second. Cougs lead the Utes by a score of 1-0. Six consecutive Utes retired by the Cougs, by the way, as Mawai Takes a little outside, but just enough of the zone, according to Stu Bertrand for strike one, 0-1 to Mawai. BYU's last win over Utah here in Provo came almost two years ago, April 13th, 2021, a 7-4 decision. And that's quickly 0-2, taking outside. Again is Mawai, and again a strike call, 0-2 to Safea. BYU beat the Utes one time last year, but that was in Salt Lake City. And lost one in Salt Lake and one in Provo. So back-to-back losses for BYU to the U. And that's reached out and chopped at the opposite field. Third base on the ground. Handled there and cleanly from Gurney to Kiernan for out number one. So, Safaya Mawai retired on a 5-3 ground out. Jacob Wilk, the first baseman, next to hit. And Jacob has hits in five of his last seven games. Jacob on the year hitting 286. Clarkson winds and deals. That's it back up the middle, but backhanded by the second baseman. Gish fires to Kiernan. And after a 5-3, a 4-3. Ground out and two gone for the Cougs here in the bottom of the second. Second baseman Jake Gish getting his first start at second base. And making a nice play. Backhands it on a sharp shot up the middle. Luke Anderson now hits. Anderson the left fielder. Jersey number 11, number 7 in the order. BYU won Utah. No score is our score. BYU hits the road tomorrow. Three at LMU as the Cougs open their WCC schedule. High and away. Fastball at 87 from Clarkson. Ball one to Anderson. Luke Anderson got his last start March 3rd here at home against Omaha. 11 days later, he starts again and starts in left field. The 1-0 to Luke. Took the bat off the shoulder, but held back for ball two. 2-0, two oh, but two out, no one on. Here in the bottom of the second inning. Mentioned BYU's lost the last two to Utah. Has also lost the last two played here at uh, Miller Park against Utah. Looking at a couple of mini runs against as that's outside and low but called a strike by Stu Bertrand. Two balls and a strike. That was a take away. It looked like a good take, but the call is strike one, the 2-1. That's again low and away. This one's a ball for ball three. Three balls and a strike. 87 miles an hour missing away from the right-handed hitting Anderson. Luke won for his last 12. He's due. 3-1 from Clarkson. It's lifted in the air to short right. First baseman going back and in foul territory. Leaning back to make a nice catch. Jaden Kiernan without number three. So Kiernan makes a nice play on a pop-up down the first base line. 
Had to do some stretching at the end to make the grab, but he does to keep it a one nothing ball game after two. So for BYU, they go one, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. Top three, BYU one, Utah no score on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Jake Gish takes the first pitch strike, swings the second strike from Mason Olson. Mason Olson had 0-2 on the Utah second baseman Gish to begin the third inning in a game BYU leads 1-0. Last three games, Gish is 0 for 11 with a couple of Ks. Fouls it away. Stays in the count at 0 and 2. Gish, the number eight hitter in the order, fouling off an 89 mile per hour hour offering from Mason Olson. Only his 16th pitch into his third inning of work, and that's high and away for ball one, one and two. Mason Olson today getting his first start as a Cougar. And his staff day for BYU fouled back again by Jake Gish. Count stays one ball and two strikes. So all of uh, Mason's work so far has been out of the pen. All six of his previous appearances, a 3.38 ERA in those six appearances. Fly ball to center field. Cole Gamble back and near the track. Makes the catch for out number one. So Cole Gamble has recorded the last two outs to end the second and to begin the third. A nine hitter, the left handed hitting shortstop Matt Flaherty, getting his second consecutive start at shortstop. Again, the infield shuffling for Utah with the injury to Landon Fry. And that's fouled opposite field out of play down the left field line. Out on the University Parkway again. No balls and a strike to Flaherty. Flaherty batting 200 on the year. Foul to the screen. That 200 average comes in just five at-bats. One for five on the year with a run and a base on balls. He did play in the Utes last game Sunday up in Seattle. Went 0 for 2 with a walk and a run against Washington, and that hits him. So, Flaherty becomes the second hit batsman for the Utes. So the nine hitter is aboard as he was clipped on the thigh. And he'll take base as Kai Roberts, who was hit by a pitch to lead off the game, will step in. So back-to-back left-handed hitters against the left-handed throwing Mason Olsen. Roberts was hit by a pitch, was sacrificed over to second, and then was stranded there to, to end the first inning. Throwing back to first is Olsen. Getting back safely with plenty of time. Kind of a cursory toss is Matt Flaherty. Kai Roberts has reached base now in six consecutive games. And laces that foul. Out of play down the left field line. Hear that steady wind in our mic. At uh, first pitch, it was 17 miles an hour from the south-southeast. The 0-1. High and away for ball one. Again, Olsen glancing down at his uh, armband with that Pitchcom LED display. A device in the dugout sends the signals to the armbands and everyone can look down and see what pitch is being thrown and if needs be where they need to be aligned defensively. Any changes are required. This replaces the earpiece system, which was pretty nifty in and of itself, but has been upgraded now to the touchscreen display. The 1-1. Chopped up the middle, handled by Jones. He'll scoop it to Pratt for one. Turn and fire for two. No, they don't get the first base out. They get one at second, and that is it. But a nice turn by Pratt on a nice scoop by Easton Jones at second. So it'll be an out at second. And reaching on the fielder's choice is Kai Roberts. And so Flaherty is out on the 4-6. 
Now the right-handed hitting Dakota Duffalo, who in the first inning sacrificed Roberts over to second. Now there's a runner at first, Roberts, with two gone. Here in the top of the third. BYU 1, Utah no score. BYU 1 run on one hit. The Utes are scoreless, no hits. As Mason Olsen prepares to throw his 23rd pitch of the day is all. Taking off is Roberts. Throw to second and just ahead of the throw. It's a stolen base for Kai Roberts, putting himself in scoring position with two gone. So throw from Bryant Ball, not bad, but getting it ahead of the throw is Roberts. And so Kai Roberts has his second stolen bases in as many tries this year. BYU opponents are now 17 for 23 on stolen base attempts. 1-0 to Dakota Duffalo. Runner in scoring position is Kai Roberts at second. A half check, but a hold up and ball one. One ball, one strike. With runners in scoring position, Dakota Duffalo hitting 286, which is better than his season average of 250. Righty in the box, lefty on the hill. Mason Olsen glancing back at second, kicks and deals inside, and that's that slightly delayed strike call from Stu Bertrand. I know no to wait for it. One ball, two strikes with two gone and one on. The man are on second is Roberts. Dakota Duffalo hitting 556 against left-handed pitching this year coming into today. The one-two from the lefty. That's check swing. You went. That'll do it. Strikes out to end the inning. And the first K of the day make it the second K of the day for Mason Olsen. Takes us to the bottom of the third for Utah. No runs, no hits, no errors. There's a runner left on. We go bottom three. BYU won Utah no score on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. Bottom three here at Miller Park in Provo. BYU won Utah no score. The number eight hitter, second baseman Easton Jones digs in against TJ Clarkson. Clarkson, whose long outing is two and two thirds, has gone exactly two and is into his third inning of work. There's another southpaw up in the Utah pen as Jones takes strike one at 86 from Clarkson. That southpaw is Ernesto Lugo Canchola. 6'5, 230. Out of Pleasant Grove. And Salt Lake Community College. Grounder to short. One hand. Fire. Low. But scoop by Kiernan. Flaherty to Kiernan on the 6-3. And one gone for BYU here in the bottom of the third. Bryant Ball, the BYU catch, catcher, hitting out of the nine hole. He's 0 for his last 11. Another guy due on the year 2 for 32. Clarkson gets an out here. He will equal his long outing of the season on the hill as that's fouled out of play by Ball down the first baseline. No balls and a strike. Due up top of the order, Ozzie Pratt. Ozzie led off with a double for the Cougs in the first and came around to score on an Austin Deming sack fly. The 0-1 to Ball. And there it is. Ends a little rut for Bryant. His third hit of the year. And it's a one-out single to center field for Bryant Ball. So Ball is aboard for the top of the order, Ozzie Pratt. Good to see Bryant get back on base. Again, he was 2 for 32 on the year. You can make him 3 for 33. Gets above the 100 mark. Or very near it. Inside to Ozzie, throwing back behind Ball, who gets back safely. Yeah, 091 for Bryant Ball as he climbs near the 100 mark to get over that will be good to see. The 1 0 to Ozzie Pratt. Fouls it away out of play opposite field. 1 and 1. Ozzie in the first doubled. Reached third on a wild pitch and then scored on the Deming sack fly. BYU then went in order in the second. And here we are, bottom three. Cougs won, Utah no score. The 1-1, one, one, one out, one on. Popped up behind the press box in the stands. One ball, two strikes to the BYU shortstop. 
Ozzy Pratt to ending his double drought in the first inning. The one two to Ozzy. That's on the ground sharply to short. And Kiernan, or Flaherty, beg your pardon, boots it. And that'll be an error on the shortstop. And Pratt will reach. Going to second is ball. And the Kooks have first and second, one out here in the bottom of the third. BYU's opponents have been remarkably clean. Only seven errors on the season in, four, in uh, 14 games until that miscue there from the shortstop, Matt Flaherty. Getting just his second start at short. It allows Pratt to reach on the E6, advancing is Bryant Ball to second, and now a mound visit, and that may do it through just two and a third for T.J. Clarkson. It was going to be a short day anyway on a staff day. We'll see if they call for the ball. Looks that way as Gary Henderson will signal for the left-hander, and we will take a 60-second break for a pitching change. So with a long outing of two and two-thirds, Clarkson got through two and a third today. He leaves with his team trailing BYU by a score of one nothing. Ernesto Lugo Cajola will be next to pitch for Utah in a minute on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. From lefty to lefty for the Utah Utes, T.J. Clarkson gives way to Ernesto Lugo Canchola. Out of Pleasant Grove and played his Juco ball at Salt Lake Community College. Enters the game. The Cougs lead by a score of 1-0 here in the bottom of the third. One out and two on. Bryant Ball at second. Ozzie Pratt at first. And Austin Deming is due up. And Austin Deming can turn this into a big inning with one swing. Lugo Canchola making his fifth appearance. Six and two-thirds to this point. Everything out of the pen. He's allowed 10 hits. Walked just two, struck out 11, so a better than 5-1 to one strikeout to walk ratio for Lugo Canchola. His high pitch count 48 in a three-inning outing at Cal State Fullerton on a Utah staff day last Tuesday. By the way, this is the 16th game of 16 consecutive games away from home for Utah to start the season. They'll be home to Arizona State in their Pac-12 and home opener on the weekend. It's a chilly, breezy day here at Miller Park. Wind blowing in from right field, south-southeast. Temperature was mid to high 50s at the start. Felt like low 50s with the wind. And the rain is in the forecast, which led to this game being moved up from 5 p.m. to 3 p.m. to try and get it in. BYU 1, Utah no score. We're bottom three. One out and two on for the Cougs. Ball at second, Pratt at first, and Austin Deming steps in on an eight-game hit streak. Has five homers in his last six games. And seven on the year to lead BYU. Rest the bat on his right shoulder. Now lifts it off the shoulder and waggles and awaits. The offering from Southpaw Lugo Canchola. And that is a five-hole single to left. Coming around to score will be Brian Ball. The Cougs will make it a 2-0 ball game. And Austin Deming has his second RBI of the day. A sack fly RBI in the first. A single to drive in a run here in the third. And it's BYU 2 and Utah no score. Everybody up a base. Pratt to second. And Austin Deming at first with that single to left field. BYU 2 and Utah 0. So Austin Deming is officially one for one with two RBI and Cole Gamble now comes to bat. So Deming is driven in his second. He has both RBI on the day. And BYU leads it two zip. One out, still two on. Gamble. Crouches and takes low and away for ball one. One ball, no strikes. One out, two on. RBI single for Austin Deming. Austin today RBIs 17 and 18 on the year to lead BYU in that category. Deming scored Pratt in the first and Ball in the third. And Cole Gamble gets a hold of that one to right field, back and to the wall, and leaping at the wall, keeping it in the park is the right fielder Duffalo. But coming in to score one, and that will be it on the plays. They kind of had to wait up as Ozzie Pratt will score from second. The Cougs lead 3-0. 
very nearly a three-run home run for Cole Gamble. Duffalo measured at the wall and kept it in, leaping, got his glove on it at the top of the yellow line and kept it in the ballpark. So Gamble ends up with a double. Deming ends up at third. And Ozzie Pratt comes around to score from second on the Cole Gamble deep double to right. And for Cole Gamble, that's an RBI. And BYU with 3-0 lead. That one's hit to center from Ryan Sapiti. Tagging with one out is Deming, and he will score to make it 4 nothing. So the big inning continues for BYU on the Sapiti sack fly to center field. And so consecutive RBIs for Deming and Gamble and now Sapiti. And it's BYU four runs on four hits in a crooked number third. Three in the bottom of the third to make it 4 nothing. And Safaya Mawai now hits with two out and a runner on second in Cole Gamble. Ernesto Lugo Canchola gets a foul back to the screen from Mawai. 0-1. Safaya grounded out 5-3 in the second. Had a nice weekend in Lawrence. Went 3 for 6 with 4 RBI. Had a 3-run home run in that series. The 0-1 to Safaya. Cole Gamble leading at second. Breaking ball top of the zone. For strike 2. No balls, two strikes, two out, man on second for Safaya Mawai, hitting 364 with runners in scoring position. And he has one in Cole Gamble. Lefty v. Lefty here. Mawai versus Lugo Canchola. That's low and away for ball one. Chase pitch, one ball, two strikes, and two out. Utah still hitless on the day. Hitless through three innings of play. BYU four, Utah no score. The one-two from Lugo Canchola. A swing and a miss, and the inning is over for BYU. But a good inning it was. BYU with three runs on three hits. There was an error, and there was a runner left on. We go top four, BYU four, Utah zero on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. <laughs> 